for Boom, they it seem like they've very much dealt with the, the Abaddon already Five here. Multiple remaining. silences, and they're saving what looks to be a Palos hero to last uh, for Dream Maker. Uh, what are you... Anything like that you'd like to see them check off here with the 18th pick? Mm, I mean, the outside of the Abaddon, who you only get one go of it, they're not durable at all right now. So Night Stalker has free reign to just run at you. Tusk as well, he's going to be able to get it onto the front lines, hell, even Mars, and create a ton of space with a silencer. So honestly, like, this could still very well be a mid-silencer. Well, that's certainly a way to get some kind of counter-initiation coming through. And of course, with a Strength Hero, it's going to have a, a decent time against any kind of, uh, of melee carry so it might force boom to go something a little different i wonder 10 seconds remaining you couldn't go drow could you on boom i i i remaining. really want to see a drow come out because the changes that it got in 7.30c nuts you know the fact that the uh the multi-shot now gets the additional attack damage bonus from the frost arrows which is 20 without talents and 35 with talents included that is a lot of extra damage that you're going to be able to pump out onto people yeah, I feel like the Drow is definitely uh, underutilized heroes, and now with the the changes like you're highlighting, we're gonna see it a, a lot more. China definitely feels like it's a region that's always had it in the in the back pocket whenever they're they're looking to play it. But it'd be interesting to see how much game time it's gonna get as people start to you know develop some of their heroes with the with the recent changes. But uh, for Boom, we're looking for yeah, so looking for the Palos hero. There's no way they can flex anything, right? To a, to a one, I think it's guaranteed that they're they're looking for Palace. Maybe a Night Stalker one, you never know. But into the Sand King, it's not great. So yeah, I, I would say most likely it's going to be his. I I, I really want to see the Drow man, like DC or something. They're taking a long time. No, I just had a look at the chat window and it's just a lot of Palace <laughs> well saying played. well played. <laughs> uh, I mean. When you think about it, right, like Night Stalker is going to be diving in deep, Tusk is going to be diving in deep, you can have a Mars with a Blink Dagger in Arena to be able to protect you, and then you've even got a Global Silence on top of that. I feel like this is not necessarily a completely free Drow game, but if you ban out things like uh, a Storm Dyer Spirit, uh, the Shrek's kind of good for it. Um, I don't think you can go a Spectre unless you were going to look to run a Clink's mid, and even then, like that, that's not an amazing lane, so... Oh. Dire team ban. I, okay, they're going for mid lane dominators that they're looking to ban out here, which, you know, is understandable, but I, I, I still feel like it's Drow Game, man. I, I'm not going to hold up on it. I think it's good. Yeah, it looks like for, for Dream Maker, they're Ten a little bit worried about the anti mage matchup into the Sand King at the Five moment. Remaining. Uh, we saw previously how that could fare with Dream Maker, where they had to flex the Sand King to a support. Hopefully, it looks like they definitely cannot do it this stage. I like at least what the hero can provide overall with some counter initiation, because Boom are very heavy committal. Like you said, Mars, Tusk, Night Stalker here is that going to be deep and up Radiant in your face. Team. So the Sand King will give you ample ways to be able to react to that and then uh, you know, have your own kind of uh, counter attack. But for Boom, they don't have the greatest way to take objectives at the moment. So with Palos Monkey playing the Monkey King, a uh, pretty solid way. And they've got great combos as well with the Mars to really utilize the Wukongs. And it's, um, I feel like Sand Kings are one of the better threes to match up versus the Monkey, though, with a little bit of the magic damage. Rubik is not as strong of a laner as what he used to be. So we'll see if Dream Maker can, how they can Five play that. Seconds remaining. Yeah, but at least you got the life steal, right? Like it's not horrible. Yeah, and you know, definitely. if you're able to get it onto someone, the Sand King, super early might not have too many points into the Barrow Strike, considering it's most likely to be a core. Um, could they do the Sand King mid actually? And they're still looking for an off laner that might pair up better against the Monkey King, because it look it's looking like being either a Mars or a Night Stalker mid. So you're gonna get co-op. Yeah, it feels like there's a lot of flex. You can Night Stalker 5, you can Tusk 5, Silencer 5. Like, it's not guaranteed. Is it? I can't see the hero. 5, okay. Night Stalker. There you go. Okay, so yeah, they are gonna 
pull out the the CTM Night Stalker for Dreammaker though. The the last pick, Queen of Pain. There's a lot of control that Cop has to play into. Are you a bit worried here for Rose? I'm a bit worried for Dreammaker overall. Like the Quop, I was about to say, like the big thing that they're lacking is damage. Like the in terms of just what you're able to dish out. Boom have so much more damage potential in the first like 30 minutes compared to what Dreammaker have. Eventually, Clinks, of course, he gets to be an absolute beast, but it's not like Monkey's any slouch either. And then even CTM is going to be like a, a semi carry eventually once you get to the like level 12 mark on him, just purely from the Dark Ascension. So I feel like Rose is going to need to get complete, like he needs to smash this mid lane, which is going to be kind of hard against Yopage. And he needs to make every single rotation count, basically. Do you like Yopage being on this type of hero like the Sansa? Like, it feels like it's not really his play style in a way. Yeah, but you've got the Tusk and the Night Stalker that can kind of fulfill that role anyway. And I'm always a fan of, you know, a mid laner that's known for, you know, one particular play style being able to go over to something else and have just as high an impact. Oh, man, the the odds are not looking too good at all. A dollar eighty five for Boomer, seven dollars eighty seven for Dreammaker. So uh, that's value. Is is it value no, not, not for this the game, draft? Not okay, this I'm game, like, no. hang on a second. I don't know. Is it? Do you really value this game with the draft they got? It's uh, definitely not going to be easy here for Dreammaker taking on uh, you know, the new iteration of Boom and with how well they've been performing. They've been in incredible. Uh, level of uh, plays and i feel like that might just continue on as well but you know, we'll see what they can dish out you were saying that the kind of biggest issues that you saw with their draft was damage and at least the queen of pain is someone who can very much provide that sure but is it enough you know the the sonic wave still has a 125 second cooldown so it's not like boom aren't reliant on their cooldowns as well but it feels like they could just get so much done in between them I have bunting oh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds. Not sure, uh, never mind. They, uh, put a good band through between each other. Not sure what. Yeezy gang. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a shoes thing, perhaps? Yeah, I, uh, I have to imagine, unless it's, uh, unless there's another meaning there. Bro, okay. I'm just rocking my sketches at the moment, you know? <laughs> there's no shoe game here. Wait, you wearing shoes in the house? No, no, like, just the ones that I have. Okay. The battle begins. I was gonna say, hang on a second, you got some shoes right now? I don't know, that's that's a bit odd. Are you, uh... Maybe some Ugg boots during the winter. Yeah, that's... I understand. Yeah, some people, uh, shoes on, even even socks off while they're, while they're gaming. Yeah, some, oh, no. There's some interesting people. So socks stay on Socks do times. stay on. Appreciate it. The feet, the feet need to stay warm, man. You, you can't let those bad boys go cold. I'll be honest, I haven't seen much. I know it's been played a fair amount, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, with the, uh, I think it was ESL. ESL, yeah. The was fall. that fall or summer? Yeah, the fall, yeah. The, uh, the boot camp, which we saw yeah. recently. I haven't seen much of it, so... I don't know how this is going to fare. The only thing is that, like I said, I feel like it's one of those things that's going to be able to transition fairly well if you do, you know, enable it to... Even just through experience, right? Just the use of that Dark Ascension. It's... From what I was hearing, I well, firstly, I too also did not get to see much of the uh, the Night Stalker as a five. Tundra was running it. I think people were saying LGD then started to, to pick it up as well, if I remember correctly, was one of the teams, but definitely Tundra. Um, people were saying just the HP regen in the lane, I, I think he's four and a half base, which is incredible. I mean, he's super tanky, three strength gain, so he can just eat up a bunch of damage. It's usually nice if you've got like a range support just to to be so. the, the front line. I was intrigued though, because like he doesn't have ways to spam void a lot and his weakness is kind of that mana issue. So I'm intrigued on how much CTM is Radiance going to be able to utilize this as unfortunate of him. Yeah, at least he got his what he needed off the choreo but as the game goes on he could just be still kind of how he plays like a position three in a way just dark ascension providing vision for the team and then you know cutting out the fight in half to really avoid you know really 
make it so obvious on the front line and the back line and make it difficult to protect, say, the clinks if they jump him. I think it's going to be more effective, like... Uh... Like, instead of... You're just more of an information type of hero, sure. as opposed to wanting to be able to dish out damage like a core night stalker is able to do you know at night time you still get a good slow out there with the void and the crippling fear if you're able to get onto a support it's not really going to cost you your life but again it's the information side of things and i think the way that they're going to solve that mat the solve the mana issue is just going for these smaller value items like let's say a, a medallion into a solar crest well, for the top lane, FBZ and play hard. Cucumber that they have with the shards to be able to have an easier way to set up with the spear. So top 10 last hits compared to Chidori's 17 at the moment. I believe we saw Dream Maker play uh, again the clinks twice against Yangon. So it seems like they are very comfortable with Chidori being on the type of hero like he is. Our pro Trezam's just going to make the trip all the way back to base. I guess the lane's not in the worst spot for Chidori to, to be positioned at the moment. Do you feel like this lane will switch up from how it is at the moment, or is it just going to be a, a bit of a farm fest? Uh, I mean, it's always going to be a little bit of a farm attack. fest, right? But any time that you're against a Tusk, even with an Abaddon backing you up, that level 3 is the key timing. Just when you've got all of your abilities available to be able to try and uh, burst down a key hero. You know, if they're able to get Chidori Radiant playing Tony even more defensively then, uh, you know, it's going to suffer in terms of how they're going to be able to scale into the mid-game because Quop, not a great damn uh, oh, tower. Might tech. be first blood down boy, yeah. Never mind actually finds it. A lot of damage unexpectedly there, but I believe he was fighting on top of the small camp, so he got some caustic finale tick over. We just saw the, the tail end of it, but a bit cool to find. He's got 900 gold now in the in the bank it looks like he's opting for the ring of health recognizing it's a bit out of resources for this lane yeah, Paj, in this mid lane he's uh opted for a bit of a different build as well wanting to go for a couple of more uh, points into the glaives of wisdom as opposed to the build that we see pretty standardly just maxing out that arcane curse in the last word why? He actually misses the curse there. Rosé, he's making a bit of an attempt here and he's going to kill Yofash. Oh, for not. Right. We killed a fight. They just TP in the, the Night Stalker, but CTM didn't want to hang around at all. So Radiant slowing down the Yopaj Silencer, like you're saying, going for a, a build that we haven't seen as much on the position to silence of. Moon has been a, a big fan of the you know, more emphasis in the Arcane Curse along with the last word. I have no issue with it. My issue with the uh, the build that Yopash is going is that, you know, it's more, I suppose, on the int steal and the int steal duration as opposed to int to damage because, you know, it's early. You don't have a lot of int to be able to play with. I wonder if the itemization is going to change as well. If he ups for a hand of Midas or if it's going to be a couple of nulls into treads and maybe like an earlier stat item. Mm. It depends how they want to play it, right? Like, are you going to try and go all in onto the super early game, considering you've got a lot of heroes that Yopash do excel? again. Bruce, this time a Sonic Wave, but they weren't getting range. He's still going to drop the ultimate. Is Yopash going to tick Did out? I it's three points in Dagger, and no nice use of the token. He needs to kind of misplace CTM, so they won't find the deny, but still the Queen of Pain. She got the blink on cooldown for a couple seconds. Can she get it off? Fairy Fire and Fable damage reduction. And Quop would just... Blink away. Not even just that, right? It's also the uh, the new change of the Shadow Strike with it providing, I believe it, it was level 3 at the time, right? So 30 healing each time, able to pick up that Hate Screwed as well. So That's Rose third time. having a fantastic time. CTM's Koro has died three times this game already. Is, uh, are the they going to get Tuskers too? Trezam. Keep adding a little bit of gold for all the boys. We make it doing pretty well across the board. The one lane that's still going well is Palos down here on the bottom side, although Rose with that haste rune. Latter parts of it. He's gonna to look to make a rotation down here. It is nighttime as well. So CTM he's gonna to look to try and bully out a little bit more with the void. Extra slow, of course. Now up to three seconds. Come and fight me. And for top. Still looking like it's uh, a lane where the farming is just starting to pick up. Uh, my eyes are kind of on the, the stacks here from Dreammaker. 
None at the moment from the top jungle, but yeah, they're already doing exactly what they need to do to enable Chidori a triple at the hard. And it looks like a triple at the Ancients as well. Dyer. Might even just look to give him the Ancient stack, right? You've got Nevermind down here on the bottom side, and uh, he's looking to go into the Blink Dagger. I feel like if you're able to pick that up earlier rather than later, it, it can look to try and catch one of these heroes, most notably Yopage off guard. It's they're gonna have the Queen of Pain that can join their Sand King as well with the the Blink, so a nice one-two combo if they get active early. And before that, they won't really have any other way to really make the plays. It's kind of nice having a support with a stun, but uh, I'm intrigued to see how they want to enable CZY. He's really sacrificing his own game just to help out Chidori. And you know, speaking about the clinks, how do you feel like the hero is going to fare now with the the changes that we saw from from the patches? Do you feel like it was enough? Is to actually hold that thought in lane, or is will be fine? Bye. Um. <sighs> going to continue to go global use is this going to be enough to live Dyer's top tower is under attack um i mean i'm not so the the purge type of uh, analyst where i know the exact uh, amount of stack gold that it gives you know what portion so that 15 percent reduction it doesn't you know immediately resonate with me I, I think it's just more about like what it means for the overall meta game you're not going to have a Klinks, a Sven, a TA, these types of crazy stack-taking heroes just come out of your triangle and be able to dish out an insane amount of damage and be three levels above the, uh, someone else. How about the individual changes to the Klinks? Because he did get touched up in 7.23, uh, oh, sorry, 7.3C. Do you feel like that was, your, in your first initial thought, was Dad, that enough to scaring. really slow down the pick rate from him? Cast rate's a little, the, sorry, the cast point is a little annoying on the Burning Dyer's Barrage for sure. Uh, just to be able to, you know, have to, it's kind of like the Gyrocopter when it used to be uh, having Rocket Barrage as, you know, a little Dyer's bit of a, a cast animation, attack. I suppose, before being able to use it. So, could look to impact him for his team fights Bottom in lane. particular as bot side. Mass TP's coming play through, play hard. Oh, uh, just the cell death at the moment. <laughs> There's going to be uh, a little more damage done bottom but continuing to have zero casualties for dream maker dyer's top tower is under attack dyer's structures are fortified so you feel like the the burning barrage just slight change it's not it's I, a little more annoying the the more impactful one is the death pact you know going from a hundred percent of the the bonus health that you get from the Dyer's units to uh, to only eighty attack. when you've got it maxed out. Radiant's Pretty damn impactful as it gets to the attack. late stage. They did buff up the the burning army by ten seconds, but and we're never really seeing the the Aghanim scepters again. It's actually the first rotation to FBZ. <laughs> the pogo stick forward actually uh, into the spear and is going to block off the escape avenue, but. Rose, he doesn't care about a measly old arena. The walls will not lock in the Queen of Pain as she can blink on over. Now, I do have to correct you. I know it says Rose as his name, but I'm pretty sure it's Rose. Or it now, is the Rose. reason behind that is... Uh, oh, speaking of him, Yopaj is looking to do a little bit of a dive. Now, the reason behind it is that uh, I'm pretty sure he's a fan of Blackpink Rose. Ah... Uh... First kill for Execration. Oh, dude, I do this every time. This is the one thing. Please bring back the stand-in tags. It makes my life so much easier. Mm -hmm. You're just saying Execration. Yeah, I did it the, the other time when Boom were playing as well. For, only for, for Palos for some reason. Play hard will be uh, another death here stacked up for Boom. And maybe CTM, but they're lacking some stuns. Yeah, it's... I don't know what it was. It's just the, the execration it rings out to me. It, it stands out when I when I look at Palace, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I miss the stand-in tags. They were, they were a nice uh, addition a, a while ago. Yeah, now you need to like Dyer's manually do them. It always feels a little bit awkward. <laughs> Anything to make uh, my life easier. That, that would be True. nice. True. Yeah, we got to go through like Dyer's some of the heroes and name their abilities are named after them. It's like, come on, man. Cast and Doom. That can be a bit, uh, a bit frustrating. Yeah. Illusion. And then we've got Nevermind just changing his name to his yep. real life surname. Fizzies. 
Could, could be in a little bit house. of trouble here. Ooh, was looking to channel up the Dyer's epicenter, but his spidey senses are attack. tingling. Man, FBZ, he just has this sixth sense. He always down. seems to be able attack. to get away from the gangs at the right time. Sure, resident. he ended up going down previously, even dropping the arena for it, but it took three heroes to be able to take him down. Yeah, like we, a lot of people have been saying it was kind of the, the hot commodity. And is this, yeah, this early blink completed. It's going to instantly try and use it down bot. A quick TP into the grasping hand to Palos. As Shadori, we penalize. The second kill picked up as Execration, as Poom will double. <laughs> it just doesn't stop, does it? Uh, we will now. Just don't look at Palos and we'll be fine. Tower is under attack. Are you keen for more uh, Blackpink facts? Yes, let's hear it. So, Rosé, she's actually from Melbourne, even though she's part of one of the, the biggest K-pop groups in the world. So, I'm always going to be a big fan of hers. Not that I'm a Blackpink fan, but, you know, girls' generation for life for me. Yeah. Any Aussie has to support a fellow Aussie. It's understandable. I get it, I get it. You... Especially hometown. Yeah. Nothing. We're, we're not filthy Sydney siders, so... God. Yeah, good old Sydney. Nothing. No, no one's ever said that. <laughs> good old Sydney? Okay, never mind. Don't be... It's no love for Sydney over there. And mm -hmm. for Palos, he's getting a lot of love in the net worth, though. You know, Desolator, the, the next item of choice, but boom. Look at to try and take yeah, an engagement out top. Oof, never mind. Quick on the fingers there. Was that PZ? But the bow to at least lock him in place here for the Night Stalker. Got some heroes in the back line. They're going to TP in afterwards. They have a pretty solid lane ward, which will scout this out. Palace looking to get involved. They're going to jump on straight to the Sand King, but he's instantly able to reset his positioning with a late global silence. So it will at least give them some space to clean off Rose. And now Trizam is going to be the next target. But going through the Abaddon's a, a difficult task for them. As never mind. He's looking for the current initiation. A huge epicenter following up the Burrow Strike. Palace is a little bit late to protect him with his own Wukongs. And it's going to be careful with his positioning as well, but just south to safety is the pounce. And that was the caustic finale being able to clean up there. That's always great when Radiant's you're able to get multiple heroes off with the uh, the debuff on top of them. And yeah, good turnaround here. Dream Maker continue to uh, to press their advantage. Dyer's and you know, I was talking about the attack. fact that they perhaps were a little bit weaker in uh, being able to group up, get kills, and then convert that into towers. But Chidori, he's going to be the one that actually gets the first Radiant's one of the game. Top tower is under Radiant's attack. top tower has fallen. Wouldn't often expect the off lane or your safe lane tower to be claimed as CTM. Just hitting night time. See if this extra movement speed is going to be enough to, to get him to safety. Unfortunately, that's not the case as I clean off CTM. I'll also get the D ward as well. So die. This might give them more of an opportunity now to look to further their tower advantage as they're looking to connect to the, the T1 mid with the catapult timing. Very nicely done. They do have the glyph. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though, because there's Radiant no arena. It's only for 10 seconds, but I feel like the global silence is the more significant one that you need to be playing around. FBZ, nice speed connection. Queen of Pain, can they chain lock it down perfectly? Or is they just in the nick of time? Will dodge the boundless, and simultaneously, it gives them an opportunity to be able to clean off FBZ. So now without the Mars for the defense, it looks like the side of Dream Maker should be able to get the tower without any casualties. Radiant's middle tower it's one of those things fallen. that makes the Abaddon really effective in team fights as well, right? You you can use your spells, you can look to get aggressive and still be silenced, but as long as you've got the Abaddon there with the Aphotic Shield, it's not going to be much for anything. And I, I like the way that Rosé was playing that too. He made sure with the blink back, you know, you might think, oh god, I've got to get to my tower, I don't want to clump up with my team all that much, but... Sorry, hold that. CTM on the top side. I think you'll live. Uh, since they take, they've taken out the Mars. There really isn't what any kind clinks. of risk going back to the rest of your team. That's a big one to find. Just catching the tail end as looks like Palos and Tusk was all they needed with the drop of the Wukongs there. So that's a about to be desolated completed. They'll run into Shazam as well. So we'll give never mind ample time to charge up the Epi combined with the Sonic Wave and. That combo is too much on the scale meter for Boom to deal with. Dyer are scanning. 
And all these people sleeping on the open qualifier teams. This just goes to show how even Southeast Asia Dota is across the board. You know, anyone can win on any single day. And, you know, the little changes like uh, some point three zero c they can uh, sometimes, you know, edge things a little bit further in your favor. Palace, he's actually getting gone on a little bit here. CTM, I don't think he's going to be able to do enough to save. Or maybe he will. And Trezam's in trouble. Oh, this on could answer. They're just going to look to avoid the Abaddon and, and deal with Sand King, but he's still got time Let's to get the Rose. Like, again, a late global silence is going to cost them. The Rose, they jump in as they'll clean off FBZ. And my oh my, we're just... And it feels like multiple times now, this global silence, it's, it's not coming out at, at a fast enough rate here for Yopaj. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And like, Radiant's look at the build that he's gone too. Like he's gone into an Atos. He went two points into the Glaives of Wisdom, but it's 18 minutes and he has not been a part of any of those Ooh. kills. So it just means that you don't have the same scaling potential. You can't flash farm. Radiant's he's easily the lowest on the network. And this is one of the downsides of having this mid silencer if you're not just playing around your team constantly. <laughs> That's speed range. There's some pretty solid abilities to steal, even lives to take as well as another one on CTM. It's it's often the uh, the Night Stalker lineup that has the vision advantage at this stage in the game, but it's you know, Dream Maker with all their wards enabling the 18 kills almost. Bit of a break in the action, man. 8,000 net worth lead. It feels like you, you would not expect that again for the, the open qualified team, but... They're coming out here with uh, incredible pace and furthering their item accumulation as well. Trezam's almost got a mech. Double damage. Now, we were talking about uh, the odds before. You'd be feeling uh, pretty happy if you were a bit of a, a Dream Maker fan here. We're Still saying... Eight to one. Yeah, we're saying off the draft that maybe it's not as not as value. But uh, how it's looking at the moment. Radiant feel like it's, it's otherwise... Radiant. Gonna smoke, I believe they scout out. Oh, not in a choke point like this. Never mind again. Epi. Just solely on CTM. So it feels like Boom get, honestly, a little bit lucky with how disastrous that could have been. Still, though, taking more and more towers. Haven't looked to contest Roche just yet, but. Well, I, I don't think you can when you've got this epicenter on cooldown, you know. Nevermind has been perfectly positioned in so many of these different team fights. 9, 0, and 5. So part of 14 oh, out of the 19. Who's he caught? He caught our palace Palos. up top. Wukong's... Do they have an answer to the TP potential? Rosé is going to be careful. They're taking so much damage. Just have to drop the Sonic Wave to make sure there's no life lost here in the ring. And, well, that... It, wait. He's beyond God. Hang on a second. Never mind beyond God. Like. <laughs> okay, they do get a kill by the triangles. That was FPC. arena used for that purpose, though, right? Yeah. Like, it's just a position five at the time. And again, oh, actually, speaking of Yopaj, I'm looking to go on to him. You can't give up your beyond God like streak. Oh, it might just do so, though. Who's going to be able to the one to claim it? They stole the Wukong, so it's a massive amount of Rubik's just laid in the vicinity as at least Yopaj will get out to safety and finally getting a little bit of intel as well, but can they get the Yule's vision? Nope. I mean, that's rough just using that to be able to get away. Hey, at least he got the, the gold-like streak. He's happy about that. Sure. You're welcome. It's... I don't think you needed to make that kind of play on the Sand King. It was, it, it always happens, right? Like you have an amazing early game, you're feeling yourself, you're thinking nothing's able to stop me, and then you dive into three people on your own and end up giving it all away. Now, with the lead that Dream Makers have, and 8,000 at the moment, do we feel like this is kind of changing how we were, you're feeling about Boom's lineup, or are we still in the in the belief that this game's gonna get pretty difficult once they find you know the bkbs and kind of their timings i mean the clinks is still gonna be able to dish out all that damage throughout all of that though right like the burning barrage sure it doesn't pierce spell immunity but you could just look to position yourself relatively safe you've gotten a badden that's gonna help with uh kiting out a lot of those bkb timings so i feel like dream maker is still in an okay spot right now 
Have to be careful. The scam was a bit early from Dyer. Now Raiden are gonna go in. I thought they would look to get a pick off and then take Dyer's Roshan, but uh, this is a trade we see often. The, the tier two down no. block for Roche, but they're coming over. Man, they gotta be careful. It's all on Nevermind, but he's not in proximity. He's getting close. Oh, looking to smoke. They're just running there, not they're caring if they the go Wukong's through. Rose. Lotus up instantly. Yopai's just gonna get ripped apart, and well, that's a big kill to find, but at least they're able to pick up the ages. FBZ will claim it. Rose somehow still alive out of all heroes. They just look to scurry away, and well, the ages. It was found, but instantly taken out of the hands of the Mars. And that could have even gone better for Dreammaker. The Sonic Wave and the Burning Barrage actually ended up helping them to finish Roche, so at least you deny it away from uh, Dreammaker's side, but boom, their losses just continue to go up and up. Yopage again, he's only been part of one kill. He's got an Atos, he's got his boots to travel, but not much else. I mean, maybe if he's able to get into this Aghanim Scepter, he's going to be able to do something, but... I mean, they're just going to be knocking on your, the door to your high ground pretty soon. Tier 2 tower gone. There's no tier 2 ta tier 1 towers left. No glyph of fortification for three and a half minutes. So they're just going to look to uh, cement their hold of the uh, the entire map, basically, on Dream Maker. They're going to see them making a transition into the triangle, Chidori, and never mind. Actually looking to contest this at the moment. Got some backup arriving. Want to just really suffocate boomers as best as they can inside the base and really limit the farm they can get across the map. And, and with the wards they currently have, it's a, a great way to enable that. Just see, he, Rose, he's the one pushing out the top wave. He's the one that can rejoin the rest of the team as quickly as he can. Chidori, he's got the rest of his team backing him up from the triangle area. So the wave's going to start to passively push out a little bit here maybe looking to group up for a smoke around the roche area yes they do they didn't have Dyer's any vision of that i believe on the attack. radiant side no nope, never mind actually they smoked underneath the observer ward on the most obvious spot so they're looking to clump around these stairs and try and make a bit of a counter initiation here if palace is able to get it onto the trees that'll break it first play hard a lead on the toss rose instantly gonna jump in forward it's a solid arena, but an instant answer to yours. It's going to enable Monkey King's Wukongs here, so they're still stuck in. And with the Global Silence, they've already used the defensive factor to be able to purge this off. But never mind. He's trying to charge up the epicenter, but this is the timing with the BKB. But once it expires, Palos is in trouble here. As Chidori just freely beating them down from afar. Enabled from the double damage rune as well. So it was looking like a decent start. As they could target through Rosé, but three casualties for Boom. And never mind as well you know he was caught inside that global silence he hit a double burrow strike and then just uses the lotus orb on himself oh, enabling him to get that epicenter off of it's, it's too zealous now uh call it territory i mean they've got the curse of avernus allowing them to very quickly take this tower alongside the double damage of course plus the death Radiance pack from Jidori. so minimum it's going to be one later rax they could consider going for the second what ultimates Radiance are on cooldown? Just the epi. I mean, there's yeah. no arena though. Yeah. Looks it, like it didn't like it didn't whiff. It hit two heroes, the arena of blood, but great fast Radiance fingers from Rose to get the Yule Scepter off to dodge the uh, the spear connection. Yeah, it still felt like though, if you Yule's dodge that and then you lay the global afterwards, then you know we still saw Rose falling, but it's. I think you have to get clinks in the Wukongs. Ooh, jump in. They found Palos. It's a big target to bring down. It's again. the huge win condition of, of Boom. And, well, they will not find it. Well, <laughs> they can just continue pushing on forward. The creeps are inside the base, so they don't even need the bottom creep wave to be able to start hitting in onto this tower. They'll have the Arena of Blood, so you can't get too cute with it all. The mine on the back lines. Oh, just a little bit too late in the arena. Still Chidori, a compromised position away from the back up. A huge Sonic Wave instantly answering back from Rose. They're looking to put Hitting all of them in the grave. It's Jopage. It's stunned up before the fountain. No one will escape. That mid wave is still pushed in as well. They don't have to leave. And I mean, Jopage, he hasn't had the greatest game. And I mean, you can't afford to buy back. You'll be lower than the Rubik if you do. Even without it, with this tower going down, he's going to have Radiance lower net worth than Ruby. The open qualifier team. You can't doubt them. 
The underdogs about to have potentially two full sets. Maybe just the melee. <laughs> the courier. Just sacrifice the courier. Take him instead. Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. Ooh, I mean, I mean, we we talked about Rose as well. Like the with the use of the global silence, once you use the uh, the Yule Scepter, you are a little bit more at risk of going down. But of course, he's got the Sanjin Kaya and going into the BKB next after that. Rose already used the Yules. He's got Trazam nearby. Another late global silence. So Rose can get out to safety now. Radiant, they've got to be so cautious on how they position. This could cost them here. Oh, They're yeah. gonna play around their higher gun. Dark Ascension giving them the vision advantage. Palace is going to leap on forward. We'll drop the work on in the choke point. FPZ drag back only CZY, but Dreammaker, they can reset. This is a heavy commitment from Boom. A lot of ultimates wasted just for the kill on the Rubik. They're looking to find an angle back into the fight. CTM not really giving them that opportunity though with the Dark Ascension vision. Poor play hard. No escape. Nevermind actually just went in onto the top of whoever was being snowballed, so ended up uh, just taking the stun for free. These are some very easy D wards though, you know, Trezam, he's gonna layer it onto the first high ground, probably walk up to the second, given that he hasn't used the borrowed time just yet. And suddenly, Boob's vision is non-existent. Blind across the map. He can even, I, I would honestly- <laughs> Back oh, again. Have to be careful here. I mean, I just put the observer ward up, yeah? Why not? <laughs> Like, if they want to come up into you, you're fine. You know, you've got an ATK net worth lead. You've got all your ultimates. Can they defend the tier 2? They don't have Wukong's or Global. Dark Ascension on cooldown for another 70 as well. Radiant are scanning. They're just looking to pick up their tier 3 items at the moment on uh, Dream Maker. They're pinging out the Blast Rig saying, please, someone take this. Yeah, maybe give it over to the Abaddon. Why not? He's got a little Greaves bit of extra survivability. Wait, he's so yep. farmed. Mm -hmm. I mean, Greaves is fantastic, right? Against the Global Silence, yep. you're always going to be able to pop it, get the Purge off, and be able to get some kind of healing off onto whoever the main target is. Yeah, we were saying Silences are the best way to, to deal with the Abaddon, but now he's got an instant answer to, to get rid of his own Silence and then can also deal with the teammate Silences. I mean they know exactly what's happening right now on Dream Maker. The creeps are pushed into the base and no one's dealing with them. They're smoked, right? <laughs> like, some, something's got to give. You can see Palace here just trying to dance around the Roche Pit as much as he can, but, you know, they're not going to fall for it. They're going to wait it out. They're going to play around their vision on Dream Maker. Middle tower is under attack. It's not going to punish them too hard. Are they going to go for a secondary smoke? Yes, they are, but... They need Dark Ascension. The courier is coming back. I mean, they know. They know that that's where they are. So they can set up perfectly around these, uh, the left and the top stairs. They need Dark Ascension. They need this vision Radiant's advantage. Radiant have attack. to start perfectly with their fight, but they're going to leave now. It. Never mind. On the front line, Arena drop right. controlling two. Global Silence as well. Min Shidori's not being able to get so much damage out through the BKB duration. They're going to try and target down. Never mind, but the Lotus Hop into oh, his own Lotus. snowball is going to give him an opportunity to blink to safety. And they set off for an incredible Sonic Wave. Somehow, never mind. It will finally be brought down from FBZ. He's trying to scurry up to the northern side. They'll be able to clean off the Mars. Simultaneously, though, a bigger fight. It's both the position ones. Tudori and Palos. Never mind. Back with the respawn. He's going to boot to travel in. And that's all she wrote. An ultra kill for Jadori to end it all as Dream Makers, the open qualifier team, will take game one. Dire victory. Convincing. Very convincing. Eight to one odds and able to pull it off. I mean, that has to be the Nevermind show for mine. Like, he was making plays absolutely everywhere on the map, only dying twice, and part of 32 out of the 39 kills. Just goes to show. The strength of that uh, that counter initiator that you're able to have, and well, unfortunately for for Palos in particular, they they picked this Monkey King into the Sand King, right? So he didn't have as easy a lane as they might have been expecting. You know, I, I, maybe the Drow was the go. You know, if they were to try and get some damage in, it would have given them an extra silence as well, which would have synergized well with Yopage. But I'm sure that that mid silence didn't work out anywhere near as well as they were hoping. Yeah, without a doubt, they were. Probably hoping for, for Yopaj to have a performance uh, a lot different than what he got and, and overall for Boom as well. They were experimenting something here with, with some of the heroes, of course. You know, the Night Soccer 5, we've seen this flex in, in other regions, not for, you know, the past couple of weeks or so, especially in Southeast Asia, but 
didn't work for Boom. You're still... There's just a lot of confidence for Dreammaker. I mean, it's got to be said, like you were saying, eight to one odds, the fact that we're able to come in and it's a convincing series victory. And if you can take, like, coming into the Pro Series, you would more than likely anticipate a lot of the open qualified teams to be the ones that are contesting for elimination. But the fact that you're taking maps off a second place team just further increases your odds of being able to just have these X Factor maps and potentially, you know, one map ahead of another team that might have been 2-0. You just need any small victories you can get, any confidence as well. And, you know, for the Ewish Dak as well on, on Dreammaker, they're really starting to, you know, show a rise in how they're able to perform. And uh, it's now just the question if they can hit back for Boom. They've they've got the caliber of players, of course, we're, we're not doubting them at all. It's just a, a game that we, we weren't able to see them shine. And now it comes down to the factor if it's going to be uh, Dreammaker that can continue with this momentum and take the 2-0 or if Boom are going to be able to hit back and, and tie up with a 1-1. But only time will tell. We'll come back shortly after a quick break. 